competitive world of luxury yacht design, Oyster already have a world-beating reputation for building stunning blue water cruisers. But for the past nine months, we've seen how the men and women at Oyster have been building a stunning new addition to the luxury yacht market. We've been here at Oyster every step of the way, watching behind closed doors as the team here negotiate the difficulties of building the brand new Oyster 495. Throughout the process, we've seen how the 495 team have battled to keep on schedule, drawing on almost 50 years of experience to keep the build on track. It's, it's very tight, it's very tight. We're on the red line, I'd say, is where we put it. From the design decisions to the implementation of a new build process, we've been watching the 495 take shape as she blossoms into a stunning blue water cruiser. And in this episode, we're gonna take a deeper look at this beautiful yacht as we examine the incredible attention to detail that goes into the final build of the Oyster 495. Since we started our journey with the Oyster 495, we've witnessed many of the decisions that have gone into building Oyster's smallest blue water cruiser. Fitting a roll call of high-end features comfortably into a yacht of this size has been one of the key challenges of this project. But the 495 isn't just about groundbreaking, compact design. At the very heart of Oyster's reputation is their uncompromising attention to detail. And that's something that runs throughout all their yachts, no matter the size. Yeah, there's a lot of activity. To pull all of those principles together for the man in charge of the 495 project, it's been a hectic year. But the end of the process is now very much in sight. We're on the final straight and I can sort of see the finish line and that chequered flag in the distance now and it's, it's not far away and we're whizzing along at high speed towards it. We've noticed our boat, hull number one, it's getting, it's getting nearer the door. Yes, well, that's, we, that's where we want it. We want it outside and we want it in the water and that's going to be soon. The completion of hull number one remains a top priority, but for Andrew, timelines have again been affected by the global pandemic. So we had our deadline of uh, the Dusseldorf Boat Show, which would have been about now. A month ago, that uh, got cancelled due to the COVID uh, situation in Europe. That uh, gave us some more breathing space, obviously, but um, it, we've still been very busy because we've now got to get the boat ready for launch rather than ready for a boat show. So there's a bit more to add to the, the work schedule in terms of getting systems tested and run up and we'll be launch ready rather than boat show ready. So still been very busy. Bit by bit, on. the first ever 495 is developing into this beautiful yacht. It's easy to see that it's a product of Oyster's rigorous production process, which is itself a result of almost 50 years of precision yacht building. And that's a legacy that is constantly evolving. To look at the level of attention to detail that goes into the interior of a Blue Water Cruiser, I've come here to Southwest London to chat to someone who's at the heart of Oyster's interior design process. Making the design decisions on the interior finish of the 495, Fleur Liversidge is responsible for ensuring that this new Blue Water Cruiser has a contemporary, spacious feel. Her goal is to create a destination interior that augments the modern styling of this landmark new yacht. My role at Oyster um, is to add a layer to the existing craftsmanship, um, which Oyster is so well known for. Uh, by adding materials, selecting materials, um, and, and materials being woods and, and fabrics. You start, you start with the wood. Start with the wood, and then you know, do everything you can to kind of enhance the feeling of space. For the 495, we have created five different looks or schemes um, that an owner um, can select from, and these have been really guided actually by the wood choice. Um, I think one of the main things for me was sort of creating the feeling of space and enhancing the feeling of space aboard the 495. So within these five schemes we've paired the woods with complementary fabrics that of course breathe light into the space and enhance the feeling of space. Um, but not only add, they add a bit of visual interest texture, but not so much and not so loud that an owner couldn't come in and inject a splash of colour 
and personalize the space to their individual taste. I think the nature of the space aboard, um, aboard, aboard an oyster is, um, is, is really why attention to detail is so important. It, it needs to be a usable space. These are practical boats. These are spaces that are going to be used and they're going to be used in so many different environments. For us, it's important that they're a home from home and they also deliver on being a beautiful, memorable space. We've already seen how those important design decisions have been made. So with Fleur's vision for the interior added to the concept, it's then over to a very special group of people to make that vision a reality. Back in Southampton, there's a rich boat building tradition that's been in existence for centuries. And for almost 50 years, Oyster have been employing local craftsmen to create the stunning interiors of their yachts. Their reputation is built on it. Passion, pride, lifelong craftsmen creating interiors from the finest materials available. To be an Oyster Yachts craftsman, you've got to almost be obsessive. You've got to have that attention to detail, which is through the roof. We need you to almost obsess over what you're producing and be proud of what you've done. Lee Parker runs the workshop here at Oyster Yachts and is responsible for the interior of the 495. He too works to deadlines, but also demands the highest level of craftsmanship from his joiners. Our quality control process is extremely rigorous. It's checked by my team leader, it's checked by our paint department, and it's checked by me all before it goes on board the boat. We have no screws on show whatsoever on any of our units. We're looking for colour match. We're looking for four mil express joint, which is the gap all around our furniture and doors. And it's, it's a consistent four mil. If it's not, it's not going on the boat. This workshop is home to some of the most skilled tradesmen in the business. But as well as building world-class interiors, they're also passing on their knowledge. With the industry in general, we pride ourselves on producing the finest yachts in the world. So the guys that are, that are older, should we say, are going to pass that knowledge on to every age group in between so that legacy can continue and Oyster can continue building the finest yachts in the world. The end result of all that attention to detail, Fleur's vision for the interiors, it's all coming together inside the first ever Oyster 495. But to make the grade, it still has to pass the scrutiny of a very particular project manager. So I'm doing a bit of uh, cosmetic snagging, um, checking out uh, things are working, catches are working properly. All the screws are there, the runners are there. Things are lining up properly. Uh, checking out for uh, any knocks or dings, just making sure everything's 100%. There's only one way to treat it, and if it, it's got to be right. It's just, there's no other way of looking at it. I'm getting really excited because the whole reason for doing these boats is to go sailing and that's what we'll be doing pretty soon. So I'm really looking forward to getting the boat on the water, getting the mast in, getting the sails on and going for that first sail trial. It's a different sort of chapter coming up and it's uh, an exciting one. Our journey with this wonderful project is almost at a close. It's been fascinating watching this hull transform into a luxury blue water cruiser. But do join us for one last look, as next time we watch this stunning boat finally take to the water and I get my hands on the wheel of the first ever Oyster 495.